Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now, wasn't that Stations of the Cross so beautiful? It was read for us by Charmaine de Castro, who yesterday read for us the beautiful story of the Last Supper. Now, I'd like you to walk with me into history. The year is 1980. The date was Sunday, the 23rd of March. The Archbishop was preaching from the cathedral the Archbishop knew that what he was saying was dangerous and could even cost him his life. A few days ago, he had dismissed the driver of the car. If they were going to kill him, he didn't want an innocent driver to die as well. From the cathedral, he had told the news media, you can tell the people that if they succeed in killing me, I forgive and bless those who do it. Hopefully, they will realize that they are wasting their time. A bishop will die, but the Church of God, which is the people, will never perish. The name of that bishop was Archbishop Oscar Romero. On the 23rd of March, it was Palm Sunday, he spoke from his cathedral. The soldiers in the military barracks across from the cathedral could hear every word from the loudspeakers that were positioned outside the cathedral. Although speaking to the people in the cathedral, the archbishop addressed his words to the soldiers. Brothers, hermanos, you come from our people. 
You are killing our brothers. In the name of God, in the name of the suffering people whose cry rises to heaven more loudly each day, I implore you, I beg you, I order you in the name of God to stop this repression. The next day, as he was celebrating Mass, it was a Monday, a single bullet of an assassin killed the Archbishop. When I visited the cathedral, that little chapel, which is so quiet and so peaceful, the sisters gave me this stole, lest I forget. And they asked me to continue to pray for peace and justice in El Salvador and all over the world. And in the quiet of my heart, I said, peace and justice, but not without forgiveness. As our late Holy Father, John Paul II reminded us, no peace without justice, and there can be no justice without forgiveness. One wonders why people would put their life in danger. In that same year, in 1980, and though in a less dramatic manner, but in a similar bloody way, three religious sisters and one lay woman, Maura Clark, Dorothy Cazell, Ida Ford and Jean Donovan were also shot to death on the 2nd of December. Jesus had said in his own lifetime, when I am raised up, meaning when I am raised up on the cross, I will draw all persons to myself. Through the centuries, men and women have continued to be drawn to Jesus and to his teaching. They have been inspired by his life, inflamed with his spirit. And ordinary people have shown extraordinary courage in speaking the truth, in defending the oppressed, in being a voice for those who are afraid, for those who are confused, for those who are uneducated. They have been people who would dream the impossible dream. They would stand against the unbeatable fall. My dear people of God, when they nailed Jesus to the cross, they didn't just nail him, but they nailed his teachings as well. We often think of the bloody and bruised body of Jesus, and we spend a lot of time contemplating the scourging, the crowning with thorns, the carrying of the cross. Now, if we do only this, we can get an emotional high which dies down almost as soon as it is started. It is like people who expect perfection as long as they come to church, perhaps on Good Friday, perhaps at Christmas. When Jesus was nailed to the cross, as I said before, his teaching and his challenge to the people was as much nailed to the cross as he was. And what was his teaching? In the first place, we have a people, a people of God, the people of Israel. They had a mystical and terrifying fear of God. God was the God who told Moses to take off his shoes before he came before the burning bush. He was a God whose name was so holy that it was a sin even to pronounce it.